So hi, welcome to another episode of History Hunter's Signature Edition. I'm going to be talking about a popular TV show that ran for a lot of years back in the 1950s, 60s, and 1970s. Do you remember what happened on September 12th, 1959? I don't, because I wasn't born yet. But it was the day that the Cartwrights galloped into the American family living room. <laughs> became one of the most popular TV shows in history, and on this episode I'm going to be taking you through my collection of autographs of cast members. They are highly prized and sought after, and uh, I want to go over some of the items that I have. <laughs> So there was a magazine at one time called Autograph Collector Magazine, and I wrote for it. This is the June-July 2007 edition, and I did a spread on Bonanza, Bonanza autographs. And um, I used my knowledge of collecting to highlight for collectors kind of the pitfalls and some of the things to be, uh, be aware of, because as you know, uh, when you write to Hollywood stars at the height of the popularity of a TV show, quite often you won't get the real thing. But in this instance, there was uh, several stars who would respond favorably to autograph requests. And uh, let's just go through it. Hopefully you're a fan of Bonanza. I know it's still in syndication today. You can catch the reruns of it. But uh, primarily it's an audience that's older in America that appreciated the values that that show taught by today's standards uh i guess you would call it corny kind of contrived so you know the story right the ponderosa was the fictitious ranch of the cartwrights or oh, everybody's heard about the ponderosa the cartwrights there was ben cartwright and his sons adam haas and little joe and uh these boys would sometimes get into trouble they were serious as well however they always would find loves in their life, and they would plan to marry them. And, of course, wouldn't you know what? They always try to kill off the women because, I don't know, maybe it turned off the women in the audience. This is a postcard that I purchased many years ago. You know, it's like any of the postcards you would have got if you stayed at motels back in the 1960s. This was for the Western Skies uh, Hotel in Albuquerque, New Mexico. On the back are the signatures, get this, Michael Landon, Lauren Green, and Dan Blocker. Now I have to explain that Dan Blocker's autograph, of course, is the rarest because he only lived to be, I think, 44 years old when he passed away. So his autograph is probably the rarest. Uh, they've all signed a ballpoint pen. If you notice, Pernell Roberts has not signed it. He was kind of the black sheep of the whole family, if you ask me. Now, the funny thing is, I went to Google, and I wanted to Google what this motel looked like today. Well, it doesn't exist. If you Google 13400 Central Avenue, Southeast Albuquerque, you're going to see a, um, a gas station and a store, I believe. So if you're familiar with that place, I'm assuming that the cast of Bonanza stayed there. Otherwise, why would they be signing the back of a motel postcard? This is an item that I was very fortunate to get. It was actually in a uh, store here in Modesto back in the 80s. And it's actually a location meal allowance voucher. And it's signed by Lauren Green, Pernell Roberts, Michael Landon, and Dan Blocker. So as you see there, they've all signed on that line, very crowded. But this was dated in 1962, I believe. Apparently, if they wanted to get reimbursed for meals, they had to sign this form. You got $2 for breakfast, $5 for dinner, $45 a day to feed the cast. Crazy. But I'm glad that they had this form. Oh, here we go. This is punched out as 531 of 1961. So I wasn't even born yet. And at the bottom is the signature of Andy Durkis, who was the assistant producer of the show. So... I think that was a $45 item, and honestly, it would fetch a lot more today. Ben Cartwright. Lauren Green was always good with collectors. Here's a signed photo to Nancy. Best wishes, Lauren Green, with his horse. This is one of my favorites. This is such a cool, uh, very serious pose of Ben Cartwright. And he signs it to Stephen. Best wishes, Lauren Green. 
and it looks like um, maybe fountain pen. This came with that lot. Michael Landon, very authentic. To Nancy, best wishes, Michael Landon, Little Joe. So if you see anything signed Little Joe on a picture, that obviously is going to command more of a value. David Canary, he was also in the show. Now, he wasn't one of the more popular, and he came along later. I believe he came along after, well, I'm, I'm not even sure. To Larry, David Canary. He wasn't considered kind of the handsome enough to be on a show, but, uh, I mean, I believe his name was Candy in the, in the series. Shows how much I know. So you probably remember when you got newspapers on Sunday, you would get the TV magazine. This was uh, the Modesto Bee, and on the cover was this drawing of Lauren Green for Nevada Smith. I had him sign it to Jeffrey with best wishes, Lauren Green. I would not recommend having anybody sign newsprint because this thing is yellow, and if you put it next to other paper, it will yellow that paper as well. It's just got some high acid content in it, so I never collect anything like that anymore. This is one that Lauren Green sent me when I was a kid to Jeffrey with best bonanza wishes, Lauren Green. So that's a cool five by seven. He sent me this also, and uh, it's not authentically signed. It's a brief print, but check it out. He looks Indian, but he's actually Canadian. Here is another picture of Lauren Green to Augie. Keep those decks clean or clear. Best wishes, Lauren Green. Now I'm wondering if this was actually signed on a cruise ship or something because I can't figure out why it would say keep those decks clear. Now, Michael Landon, he's one of the rarest, I, I believe, uh, because he had a battery of secretaries that signed for him. This is an example of one that's authentic to Harmon, best wishes, Michael Landon. As you can tell, it's uh, faded from time. It probably dates back to early 70s, I would say. Probably between the Bonanza and the Little House days. I don't have a clue who Harmon is, but at one point he gave it up. This is a rec recent acquisition. You're not going to believe this. But, of course, Michael Landon went on to Little House on the Prairie through NBC TV Network. He wrote a letter to somebody who encouraged him, would you believe it or not, this letter was signed to Ronald and Nancy Reagan. Ronald Reagan, Ronald, hey, that's not bad. And I have it in my hot little hands. Don't know what happened. I don't know why the Reagans gave it up, but I found it on eBay. Uh, let me read it to you. Dear Ronald and Nancy, I'm not quite sure what I said to you on the phone the other night because to be very honest with you, I was left a bit speechless by your call. I can only tell you that it could not have come at a better time. All of us need a shot in the arm from someone we respect, and you gave me that much-needed shot by your phone call. I only hope that in the future, I can have other shows which will make you as happy as your phone call made me. All my best, Michael Landon. And this was sent to the Reagan's house in Pacific Palisades. His address, 1669 San Onofre Drive. Authentic signature, too. I mean, you wouldn't want to send a letter to Ronald Reagan that wasn't signed authentically, right? But no, it is. Truly is. This this is also a nice bonanza shot to Paul. Best wishes, Michael Landon. Probably signed later in his life. Of course, he died in 1990. I want to say 1990, 91. Shot of little Joe there aiming his rifle at the bad guys, no doubt. And of course, I cannot help but bring out this beautiful picture. You know who this guy is? Me, with Michael Landon. He was shot in 1984. This is my son, Brett. He was just a baby, and he signed it to Jeff. Best wishes, Michael Landon. I was very fortunate that he did not allow a secretary to sign this. Another nice little Joe Cartwright uh, pose. It's got his little pout, I guess. That was popular back in the day, but... To Gene, best wishes, Michael Landon, authentically signed. So I'm fortunate that I have some authentic Michael Landons that, because I actually did a video. You probably saw it. Um, he sent out a lot of phony stuff back in the day. So I just want to talk to you a little bit about Bonanza. Uh, again, it started in 1959, and it was the death of Dan Blocker in 1972 that actually finished off the show. I mean, it was starting to wane in popularity. 
but the death of one of the most beloved characters on the show was, uh, you know, it's time to end it. The, the series had run a long time. It still has a devoted fan base. Lauren Green was a Canadian-born, granite-faced actor who starred in all 397 episodes of the series. Now, earlier in his career, he was a radio announcer on Canadian Broadcasting Company during World War II. It was his barrel-chested voice that earned him the title of the Voice of Doom. He gave up a $70,000 a year newscaster job for acting, but Bonanza made him a rich man. He was pretty generous responding to autograph requests through the mail. But, like I showed you earlier, he was known for sending out a lithograph portrait that uh, Baird Bay printed, Salutation at Signature. Now, when he signed, he often inscribed the best Bonanza wishes. Now, after Bonanza went off the air in 1973, Green starred in the original Battlestar Galactica, which was an unlikely role for a Western icon, but one where he played the Patriarch again. Some fans felt that Green's appearance in Alpo dog food commercials was demeaning, and an end to a great career. Tess loves to go out tracking. Tess, there's your son. Even at 14. That's 98 to you and me. And both dogs love to come home to Alpo Beef Chunks dinner. Now, he died of prostate cancer in 1987, and I got to highlight his grave in one of my earlier videos. I hope you can find that one. He was buried at the Hillside Memorial Park in Culver City, not very far from where Michael Landon is buried. Dan Blocker probably was the most loved of all characters. He was big, he was dumb acting, but he had a heart of gold. Everybody loved him. And he went in for surgery. It was routine surgery, and he died. Now, there's a story in the September 26, 1964 TV Guide article when a Dwight Whitney recounted how Blocker tried to enjoy a baseball game with his sons. Within five minutes of sitting down, a boy ambled up to the actor for his autograph, and instead of ignoring the boy, Blocker signed and flashed his famous toothless grin, triggering a mob scene. Within minutes, 50 or so excited kids were in his face wanting his autograph. There was one guy sitting in the back who was very irritated. He was blocking the view. He shouted out to Blocker, Hey cowboy, down in front. If you want to sign autographs, why don't you try Hollywood and Vine? Blocker commented to Whitney, I still can't believe the people are that interested in me. If they don't have anything more to concern them than Hoss Cartwright, then what hope is there? You know, if Dr. Jonas Salk walked down the street, nobody would recognize him. I find that terrifying. Michael Landon wrote or co-wrote eight Bonanza scripts and directed 14 episodes, including the episode in which Haas's death was explained. Pernell Roberts was a native of Waycross, Georgia. He was born in 1928. He appeared in 164 episodes. Before Bonanza, he played minor league baseball and played third base on the St. Louis Browns farm team. Bonanza producer David Dortort first considered Claude Aikens for the role of Adam but chose Roberts for his handsome face, his dark hair, and his rich voice. Roberts soon became the black sheep of the Bonanza family. On the second day of shooting, Roberts walked into Dortort's office and pulled it off his toupee, saying he wanted to play without the hairpiece. Dortort refused, saying Roberts looked 15 years older. This exchange began a friction between Roberts and his producers. Roberts would later protest the show limited him in finding other roles. When Roberts left the show in February 1965, the writers tried to substitute him with other characters, neither of which lasted long. They were Barry Coe, who played Ben's stepson, Clay, and Guy Williams, who portrayed a nephew named Will. Of course, he was typecast for years. Roberts eventually broke free, starring in his own series, Trapper John, M.D. And I must say that the decision for him to leave the show for what he thought were major roles coming his way was one of the dumbest decisions he could have made in his profession. Now, following Adam Cartwright's departure, writers created the character of Candy Canaday, who was a ranch foreman who left the army to become a cowboy. He was played by David Canary, born in 1938, and he stayed on the show from 1967 to 1970. Dortort saw Canary in a Gunsmoke episode and decided to add him as a character actor on Bonanza. Because he was not traditionally handsome, and was a tough sell to the NBC network executives. Like Roberts, Canary clashed with Dortort and left. Canary returned to the soap opera genre and won five Daytime Emmy Awards for his portrayal of twins Adam and Stuart Chandler on All My Children. So I want to thank you so much for joining us on this look back at Bonanza. Let me know if you enjoyed watching the program, if you've never heard of the program, 
and what you thought of it. And what did you think of the autograph collection that I showed you? I would guess that a lot of you probably don't understand autograph collectors, don't understand what the allure is for holding pieces of paper that celebrities sign. But for me, it's a piece of their life that is forever captured, or at least until the autograph lasts. The autograph is part of the person's experience on Earth. We're only here for, you know, if you think about it, a very short period of time. Michael Landon was 52 when he passed away. Haas Carter was in his early 40s. And there's only so many autographs that he signed. And to have something rare like that, I think, really appeals to me. So I do want to thank you. I hope that you weren't bored to death by what I had to show you, if you're not an autograph collector. But I do hope that it was interesting enough to stay to the end. Love to hear your comments. Let us know. Also, if you have not subscribed, we would love to have you as a subscriber. If you could hit the notification bell as well, you'll know when we post a new video. And typically, we post videos every Sunday. That's not always a hard and fast rule, but it's pretty much the way we've been doing this channel for a while. So thank you so much.